have been confusing. So this is the last part. As you remember that I started talking about um, transformer, because that's the fundamental concept. And this GPT, the T is for transformer. And then I talk about clip, which is a big um, contribution, which has started all this revolution, visual language models and so on. Then I have been talking about the other visual language models. Um, uh, and this one is the last part of this. Uh, if you remember that we talk about Koke, which uses the um, standard uh, contrast loss and the also captioning loss. We talk about Poly, and we talk about Flamingo, and Flava, Painter, and Blip2. And we'll discuss these papers in detail, actually. So the third paper is Blip1 and fourth one is Blip2. And Image Bind and Language Bind and Lava, which was the first uh, kind of first the visual language model for the conversation. You can ask questions and you can you know, uh, it leverages the image encoder and also the large language model. So today we are going to talk about video chat GPT. Because most of the discussion has been on images. But next uh, frontier is a video, okay? So this is the very nice paper from our collaborators um, called Video ChatGPT, and uh, from this researcher from the UAE, uh, MBZY University in Abu Dhabi. So there's a whole university about AI. That's what they're calling AI university. Everything is related to AI. So it's one of the unique university in the world. Um, so, Video Chat GPT uh, is a simple video conversation model. Uh, one of the first one is a semi-automated annotation framework to take the video frames and come with the annotation and then leverage that to come up with the instruction tuning and we'll discuss more detail. So what they did, they look at the data set um, of the the activity net, they look at 100,000 high quality instruction data for the videos. And uh, they also propose the first quantitative video conversation evaluation. But that's becoming a big thing that you, you can build the system, but how do we evaluate how good they are? Because it's a conversation, it's interaction with humans and so on. So especially when you have video, you know, uh, you have to look into other metrics. So uh, this is the way it looks like. And uh, we'll go through that step by step. So input is a video. So video is a sequence of frames as shown here. And we will take those and put in a clip, OK? We, we shall encode our pre-trained clip, large 14. And uh, then every frame we will have embedding. We'll have the tokens from every frame. So these are the tokens, you know, in the clip, let's say we have four frames. So this first frame, second frame, third frame, and so on. So now these are the representation of each frame, but we want to come with represented for the whole clip. So this does not have any temporal information. So how do you take this frame-wise representation, come up with the special temporal representation? So what they did is uh, the, um, did the spatial pooling for temporal feature extraction and then temporal pooling for spatial feature extraction. So let's look at what is uh, <clears throat> the temporal pooling. So you have um, these uh, frames and these are the different frames in the clip. And we basically, average the, the tokens in frame one, frame two, frame three for first token, we will get the average for first token. Then second token for all these frames, second token, third token, so on. So this will be the representation of this four frame clip, which is temporarily pooled different frames. We just take those for the corresponding token we average. And we'll go second clip again, we'll do the average of pooling like this and get this one and like this one. 
So that is the templar pooling. And in this one, special pooling, we will take the, all the tokens here in the first frame. Average, we get one token. Then we get one token from this one, one token from this one, and so on. And we will put those in one representation. And that is that. And we'll take again average spatially. In this one, we're averaging temporarily. We're going different frames. Here, we will just look, stay in that frame. We'll average those. So we'll get this after a special pooling. So if you look at a uh, little bit more detail, so each video clip is represented by T frames. And uh, we have H horizontal token and W vertical token. So we have these many tokens. And this we will call N. So H times W will be N tokens in every frame. And each token is a D dimensional vector, okay? So given that, so we will average pooling across the temporal dimension, which means that um, we will take all these frames in that clip and we'll average. So therefore we'll get rough T because now it's one. Okay, so that's what we have. N, D, N tokens and each token D dimension, as I told you, taking all these, we'll get just one of these, which is shown here. So that is the special features. And then we'll do the average pooling along the special dimension, which is uh, shown here. And for that, we will get T tokens, but for this one, we'll get just one token, right? Because we are averaging. So therefore that will be this one, that we have T tokens in uh, each is D, D, D dimension. And here we have N tokens, each is a D dimension. So that is the representation, the temporal representation, special representative for that particular claim. And then just one second, then we'll take these TI and ZI concatenate. Now we will have T plus N token for that, that clip. And each token is D dimension. Okay, yes, please. I don't know if you understand the default feature. Yeah. What you don't understand, this one or this one? Like it's using a, having the images of the frames in the thing, I understand that. But yeah. what is the, how do you have it? What's time? Well, yeah, so these are times, right? This is a frame one, frame two, frame yeah. three, frame four. Yeah, so this is the same thing, but try to understand. Do you understand this one, how we get this? I think so. Okay, how about this one? No. Okay, so that let me explain again. So this is a frame one, frame two, frame three, frame four. So what we are doing here, we take all the tokens and average them. So in this one, we had N tokens in every frame. So each is D-dimensional vector. We average them, we get one token of D-dimensional vector. So that represents that frame. Okay. In each frame. One token, then we get one token from here, one token from here, one token from here, one token from here. So if we have T frames, then we will get the T tokens. Okay, yeah, it's, it, you know, just look at notation, I think that will help you. So that's the way you capture now this representation of T plus N token represent that clip. It has a special feature, it's a temporal feature. Okay, good. So then what they do, they take the linear layer and that kind of relates the video encoding with the large language model. And this is a similar thing as we talk about in the LAWA, okay? So large language model, as you, as you know, there are several of those. Vicuna is public domain from Salesforce, uh, it's available and they use that. And then this will be a video chat GPT so the idea will be system command will be you are a video chat GPT, a large language um, model trained with video instruction data and user will ask where is this video taken from and the answer will be this video is taken in new york city essentially in the vicinity of the state of liberty the statue is shown in the background and the video also shows the city skyline in the background amazing right so this can tell you, this can talk to you. So that's what we want to do. 
Okay. So now the main thing is that how do you come up with this instruction set? And they have to spend a lot of efforts and it's a human assisted annotation. So take, take the videos and caption from activity net 200 and they employ these annotators, humans and their friends and other engineers and so on to enrich that annotation which is available uh, already with their data set and that make an improvement. So they want to emphasize the physical appearance of the video, spatial and temporal localization. Uh, and so this is the example here, it's a video. Original description from the data set is this one, very small. But now they showed the human and human wrote this whole paragraph, right? With more detail and that's what they want to do because you want to be able to con have a conversation. This is another example. Original annotation is very small, about three lines, but it's the better one. So if you look at the <clears throat> comparison that the human annotator kind of highlighted as a camera pans, dust green branches, enjoying each other's company and festive spirits after they finish hugging ornaments and all this thing. The scene is one of the holiday cheers and joy, a cute little bear and so on, okay? So now the it's a semi-automatic annotation framework and they want to enrich this uh, using off-the-shelf models. So blip2, we talked a little bit about. Um, can, one of the things it can do is get a caption. Given an image, you'll find captions, right? Uh, that's one of the thing, and it was actually pretty good. Blip2 is uh, probably state of art now. Is that right, Savita? Okay, so it's, it's still a state of art. Um, Grit is another, you know, off the shelf model, which will um, give you uh, caption for scene objects. In an image, what are the objects present? Okay. And then there's another utility, tag to text, which will give a tags for each frame. Okay. So they are using all this uh, and the ground annotations. So they are, you know, these are the utilities available. So they use those, but they want to apply, you know, the high threshold to get really good ones. And um, they remove blip2 or grid captions which don't match with the tag to text uh, frame level text. Okay. And I'll give you an example. And they merge all these captions and apply GPT 3.5 to summarize. Right. You will see in all this that GPT will use again and again, which is you know, really uh, important to notice because. The, the power of GPT, the chat GPT, is that it can do so many things, you know, which is, that's why it's so popular. Um, so the, like here is the original annotation. This is semi-automatic annotated, this is another example. But if you look at here, as I told you about this one, the woman standing in the arena suddenly, and the countdown continues to show more numbers and clips of people spinning and turning before they release. So those are the new things added with all this. So if you look at now, is the audio on or? Okay. So this is, uh, you guys have seen this uh, show, everybody's uh, favorite. So let's see how it's played. Okay. So where do I do the audio? On the video next to the pause button. Okay. Okay, now it's good. It's time for One, two, three, Some fun in the class. So this guy passed away, right? One of the guys. Okay, this is the only class you'll see the video, right? <laughs> Friends. Okay, so this is the original um, you know, annotation from the data set, which is pretty limited. And um, so we want to fix that. 
okay? So now blip two will give you this kind of caption. Three women are sitting in the couch. Great description will give you a woman in a pink outfit, and this is a bounding box for that woman. And the tags will give you that in this image, there's a table, there's a couch, there's pajama, and so on, right? So these all these are useful. And this is another one, a man and woman sitting in a couch and men sitting in a couch. These are per frame. Everything is still for one frame, okay? So that's what they do. And then the thing is to take that and you want to remove the noisy information, okay? So for example, you know, flower pattern, it wasn't really there and holding a, you know, remote wasn't there. So they want to look at the consistency between these three pieces of information and uh, that's what they end up doing. Okay, so now given these captions for the um, video, because you start with a frame and you come use all the resources, combine them, you have caption for the video. So you want to now come up with the question answer pairs so that you can train this um, video chat GPT so that you can then do a conversation, you can ask questions. And uh, that's what, you know, again, they are going to use a GPT 3.5. Um, so they want to come up with these questions, which can be like uh, about detailed descriptions, can ask a summarization, can ask question answer pairs, and um, task the, that simulate creativity, a generalization of new new ideas and conversational task and all that. So once they give these uh, these uh, videos and caption, I mean they give the caption, not the video, to ChatGPT, uh, and this is the uh, questions it comes up with because ChatGPT, the GPT three point five, it generates these questions automatically say what are the main activities that take place in the video, and also it gives you the answer, what should be the answer. So there's one question, there's a, another question, is the mind the not only person who does something other than singing? Answer is yes, the mind walks on the fireworks uh, while people still sings. And they, are, they have 100,000 of these question answer pairs, okay? So um, the... Um, the, there's a one slide it doesn't show here did I miss so there is there is actually um was it hidden can i can i get out now can, can you can you check if there's slide hidden because that show you how they sent to um maybe i can get out of from here right okay so yeah uh no i thought there was one slide i put in maybe it's not copied or something um anyway so what happened you are using the old version or something oh okay yeah maybe that's fine okay sorry i'm ahead of myself okay so i just continue here right okay virtual guys uh, are you able to see again the screen yeah we can see okay thank you okay so yeah that's fine that's good okay so these are question and answer pairs they give it give the captions, the final caption for each video to GPT 3.5, ask them to generate these questions and answer pair. And this, they are listed in their GitHub site. You can look at that more. It's just piece of it because the file is very, very long. Uh, okay, good. So now, yeah, this is what it says, create question answer pair from a detailed caption. So this, you know, in one example, can you summarize the events in a video? Yes, the video shows a man playing bagpipes in front of a group, people sitting on a couch, they start laughing at some point, creating a friendly atmosphere and so on. Then can you describe appearance of bagpipes player in the video? So there's in a black in front of television and all those things. And who are the people sitting on the couch in front of the bagpipes, the three women and a man, and so on. So. These are the questions generated from GPT 3.5 based on the captions of this video, which we went through how to get. 
Okay, there's no video input to that. We have GPT 3.5 does not take video. Okay, so now how do we evaluate this kind of model? So they came up with this quantitative measure to you know test how good is this model. Okay, and uh, for that also they use GPT. It's pretty interesting. So there are two types of evaluation. One is the video-based generative performance benchmark, which is, you know, can the system can generate a text and answer question and so on. And other is a zero-shot question answering evaluation that we've talked about before. So, you know, so they curated a data set using ActiveNet test set, human generated data detailed descriptions, GPT 3.5 power division pipeline, and um, they look at these different capabilities of the model and then assign a relative score to the generated prediction on scale one to five. Okay, I mean, GPT did that. Um, so those were correctness of information and detail orientation, contextual understanding, templar understanding, and consistency. Okay, now what these are. So correct name information is that we want to verify the accuracy of generic text. You know? That it aligns with video content and does not misinterpret or misinform. Then detail orientation is that you want to evaluate the depth of model's response, looking for completeness and meaning model's response covers all major points from the video and include the specific details rather than just generic points in the model's response. And then contextual understanding, video's context, checking if the response aligns with the overall context of video content, how the video is progressing. And then temporal understanding, examine the temporal sequence of events in the video. And consistency, model is consistent across different similar questions or different sections of the video, okay? So, and this is like a code, they give it to GPT to do the evaluation. Okay, so as well, you are intelligent chatbot designed to evaluate accuracy, this far accuracy, okay? Um, no, for correctness. For video-based question answer pair, your task is compared predicted answer with the correct, uh, determine if they are factually consistent, is how you can accomplish this task. Focus on factual consistency between predicted answer and correct answer. Predicted answer should not contain any misinterpretation, misinformation. Predicted answer must be factually accurate. Consider synonyms and paraphrases as well as matches and factual accuracy of prediction compared to answer. And please evaluate the following you know, question, answer, and so on. So this you can ask GPT. 3.5, it will do for you. Automatically, you can even do it. So they did that, and they compare with, uh, there are a few other models, um, video chat, llama adapter, and uh, video llama. And this is their chat, video chat GPT. So it did pretty well um, in these metrics, okay? So now for the zero shot evaluation, so this is the, we have seen this one, the MSR VTT question answering, it's a very old data set, MSVD question answering, and TGIF, and all those activity name question answering. So, and use 3.5 to measure the accuracy of this model. And uh, these are the results. So they compare with video chat, llama adapter, video llama, and frozen limb, it's another model. So again, they do pretty well compared to these other models on these data set, so which is good, okay? Um, so then there's another data set um, called the fun question answer benchmark. So they have some, you know, funny questions answering. Um, and they have, this evaluation was done by that, the author of this, this data set. They didn't, these authors of this paper didn't do that. And they found out that um, compared to 
other systems, you know, they do reasonably well. So this is the video chat GPT, which are the instruction based models on this creative and magic and humor. So, okay. So then let's look at the video understanding task. So let's look at um, this video. Um, so I should play. So then the, so this, that this is actually online demo. You can actually play with this thing on their GitHub. So, um, so you ask these questions, um, why this video is funny, and uh, then we'll go through and we'll tell you the video is funny because the little girl seeing reading a book while wearing a pair of glasses, a pink shirt, combination of her glasses, pink shirt, and the fact she's reading a book at such a young age make the scene amusing and uh, endearing. Okay, that's pretty nice. Um, so computer is able to see this, say that. So this is the comparison video llama. And um, so video llama will um, give you something like that about this. Um, and then this is theirs. Um, how do you play? Yeah, okay. So video chat GPT. So first is the video and then the after you upload video, what is the strength about this video? The video is strange because it shows men and lion interacting in a way that's not typical. And the man is seen petting a lion on the head, which is not common interaction between humans and lions. Additionally, lion is seen clicking the man's face, licking the man's face, which is also not typical interaction. Humans and lions, the video captures unique unconventional moment between the man and the lion. Okay, so this is the other one. Um, what's going on? Oh, this one, okay, the whole thing. Yeah, what is the video about? Um, then the annual aspect of this video generate graph perform and flip on a diving boat is not a common sight as graph are not known for their acrobatic activities. The video shows the performing a flip on the diving board, which is an impressive feat. Okay, so let's keep going. So this is the other one. Can you say any safety hazard in the video? Yes, there is safety hazard. Child is playing with a toy car on the floor and so on. Okay. Child is sitting on the floor in front of the fireplace, which could potentially be safety hazard. If the child gets too close to the fireplace, it is important to keep children away from the fireplaces. Um, how to clean snow off your car. Uh, okay. Yeah, so the north these days, there's a lot of snow, <laughs> so. This is how you clean your car when it's snowing. Now, it's still snowing, but you can still clean off your car when you're getting ready to go. Either way you want to brush the snow, it's okay. So this is, I think, very long one, so. You don't have that much time. It doesn't matter what size you get first. That windshield, you say, Hey, my uh, inside window heaters, and there you go. Make sure your brake lights have it. Now, they clean up your car. So, then describe the video. The video shows a man cleaning snow off his car, and so on, and then things like that. So, let's look at the generative and creative generative task. Um, Everyone loves the way skin authority sunscreens feel when they go on. 
We incorporate our exclusive dry finish technology so that the sunscreen absorbs quickly without leaving your skin feeling greasy. We've also applied our multifunction design for our sunscreen to give you multiple results with just one application. Sunscreen Moisturizer SPF 30 is a broad spectrum of sunscreen plus a saving moisturizer in one. Okay, so then the question is, um, this one, you know, what is the this video about? It is about a woman applying a sunscreen on her face. Gen say generate uh, creative advertisement feature about this product that can be used on the product website. Say goodbye to sunburn and hello to healthy, glowing complexion <laughs> news. And some screen product designed with natural ingredients, a lightweight mix texture, or sunscreen is perfectly for daily use with this grocery formula, greasy, non-greasy formula, and so on. Which is very impressive, right? I mean, did not really know. Yes. Yeah. So, this is a way I can understand the basis of what these frames. Frames of the video, right? In the final video. But, uh, there were two different versions of audio videos because these videos get a lot of time. Like, most of the videos come to the audio, right? Yeah, yeah. So, they didn't take into consideration the audio. So, if you look at the previous version of the previous show, that wasn't about like a man brushing up smoke on the That was like a tutor on how we can get rid of us, get rid of smoke on the car. Like, this video was about advertisement for our sunscreen. But I think we've already seen some models that can be able to. Images and audio at the same time. So, yeah, yeah, that's I'm going to talk about next. That actually, we have a paper on this. But that's a good thing. So, right now, only the visual information video, no audio is being used. And um, based on that, still, it's interesting, right? Because if you look at this, the looking at this video, if you if you turn off the audio, it's very difficult to describe this that you can come with a commercial. So, that was actually a question I had asked. Uh, in this main author they were talk that how did this um, you know uh, GP, video chat gpt came up with this whole description just looking at the visual information so probably is a the power of the language model right the language model has so much information so combining with visual this information all this is so able to do that but yeah so i'm going to show you the very briefly the video uh, the audio also okay so that's that. And um, there's another example here. Um, this doesn't have audio or something? Maybe not. Yeah. Okay. Can you shout a write poem inspired by a video? Yes, I can write a poem. The garden flowers bloom, sway in the sunlight, they dance and play their colors. A vibrant their beauty, rare, a sight to see, a joy to share, their petals rustle in the breeze as they open up to the sun, their fragrance fills the air, a symphony of nature's finest art. The beauty is gift from above, reminder of the love and care. Well, it's pretty interesting. So you can do that. Okay, so <laughs> So let's look at this one. Um, this is another video. Which movie is that? People know that? What's the movie? No? So can you create uh, create a short fairy tale with uh, moral lessons inspired by the video? So, you know, it's thing about, you know, beautiful princess Cinderella. She lived in a life of luxury and uh, happiness and but her life was not without challenges one day and all those things okay so let's look at the special understanding um, so this is the video of um, new york city I think.
So where is this video taken from? What place landmark is shown in the video? It was taken from New York City, essentially in the vicinity of the State of Liberty. State is shown in the background and the video also shows city skyline in the background. Okay. So um, then spatial understanding task. Describe the video. Video shows a person cutting up and peeling a red paper and then cutting up into slices. Then you ask how many slices are on the baking sheets. There are four slices of red paper on the baking sheets. Temporal understanding of this. Okay, describe the video. Detail men standing in the snowy field throwing a javelin. He throws the javelin and turns towards it, picking out, throwing it again. Then he turn, runs towards javelin and picks it up, drawing it once more. Then men then runs towards it. So it's describing temporarily different things it's, uh, it's doing in the video, which is pretty nice. Um, let's look at this one. Temporal understanding task. Noodles. Rain the water. Cold water. That's very tasty. Okay, so then giving this video, so come up with a cooking recipe shown in the video. So it's talking about person cooking a dish in a pan, the eight ingredients such as noodles and spice it to the pan, then stir the mixture, the person then pours a sauce into the pan and stir it until it thickens. Finally, they add some more ingredients, and stir the mixture again, the dish is then served on place, okay? So um, more understanding, briefly describe this. So women who's grooming horse with a brush. How many different horses are seen in the video? There are two different horses seen in the video. Okay, so just summarize uh, that this is a multimodal model for video understanding and conversation. And it leverages an adapter that may have added after the video encoder, the clip encoder, and the large limit model. And um, fine tune on the video instruction data to capture the temporal dynamics and special consistency relationship. And uh, data set of about 100,000 video instruction. So, and they come up with this, how to evaluate these framework using, you know, quantitative metrics. Okay, so that's the this is the paper which does the audio also, and uh, this is called PG Video Lava Pixel Grounding Large Video Language Models. So I'll very briefly talk about this. So again, the idea is very similar that you start with the video frames, but in addition, video you have audio here. Okay, so then you have video encoder, and then you have the wise activity detection, <clears throat> detect, you know, different activities happening, audio, and then you find the phoneme, and then use a whisper, again, open AI, which will convert the audio speech to the, to the text. And uh, then we have this scene detection, uh, given a video, what are different scenes happening, and then tagging module, 
we will take this you know loyal main and mountain frame and then there is also uh, some kind of tracker in this and now the system works very similar so you have user query what's the person in the video doing in the system say you are chat gpt lava a large language model trained with video instruction data and then the response will leverage this information from all these things and of course the there is the um, going to the large domain model here it will give an output response which would be person in the video is a man who's sitting on the ground and getting creating a line now one good thing about this is that it's doing the grounding which means whatever um response is it's able to tell where that is you know put a bounding box or you know they do the segmentation of these different uh, objects of people and animals there so that's why it's called pg video pixel grounding okay so they also evaluated this on using these metrics we talk about um and um, then they compare with also video chat gpt and they found out that this one actually beats video chat gpt in these um, uh, metrics also um, on this standard data set uh, msr vtt and tgif and so on that also it performs better than other models llama adapter and video llama and so on yes yeah, yeah. So this uh, the, the the method they came up with, which you put they propose in the video chat GPT is a available protocol. They they use that. That was I'm sure the different model that they're using. They were also no video chat GPT is the model which does the without audio. Huh? So in that paper they propose how to evaluate any model. So that's why they can evaluate Llama adapter, video Llama, and all these models. So that's what they show. In the other paper here also, they are evaluating their model, the new one, PG video, and also video chat GPT. Okay. So um, so these are the examples here, you know, and they compare with the video chat GPT and PG video Lava that describes this video video chat gpt can say this but pg video lava has more information of course it depends on you know 7 billion this is 13 billion so much more powerful and it's much Tom. more detailed as compared to this one and um, same way here um, they can compare with these models that this answer is pretty short, but just more detail. Um, so the interesting thing about this is that it can ground, which means, you know, say graph and it's putting a bounding box, right? Here is a water, it's putting a main, you can put the bounding box. So that is one at one, because you come with the answer, how do you find the answer? So it tells you here, so which is good. And statue, it will put the bounding box in statue large body of water and so on, okay? And um, this is a similar thing. What do you see in this video? Young girl is performing gymnastic routine on a balanced beam. She starts by jumping on the beam and they proceed to perform various flips and turns. She finishes the routine, jumping off the beam and landing on a bed, okay? Now, this is a good thing, the power of this. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, like in the previous um, one with the girl jumping on the beam, so they get like different descriptions in each frame and then kind of like put them together. Yeah. And so, like if you ask it, which frame does she jump off the beam? Does it keep track of that? And can it like tell me, like in like the last frame she does it or something like that? Or yeah, so then I mean, you know, the the in a way they do the grounding, like they tell you the girl where she is and what is the you know pose of a person from there you can infer that where she's jumping she's standing or jumping 
um, but it's not uh, in a way the answer is not localized to frame number, but it localizes to the objects, the pixels in the, in the image. So you can from there you can maybe you know uh, come up with like you know where is the balance beam and which frame it is. So you can do that. Uh, Doctor, okay. uh, can you know, yeah, yeah. So you know the that what's being evaluated. So as you saw the metrics here, so they compare with um, temporal understanding. So that's kind of doing that. But this is from the response. So see the evaluation is done on the response. So you put this question to the system, it give you answer. Now, then there's a ground truth answer, and then ChatGPT compare and say, well, is it capturing a template? But ideally, it'd be in humans kind of video, but it's not possible in 100,000 videos. And humans are also are biased. That's another problem, right? So then 100 humans in average is something. OK, uh, so Shah, um, uh, can you uh, yes, explain the grounding? Yes. Uh, can what? you explain the grounding module? Yeah. In more detail. Yeah. So we will discuss this paper in detail. There will be a whole lecture, uh, you know, and you guys who are interested, you can actually sign up for this. But but main thing at the high level is that um, you are using um, some kind of tracker and also the tagging module and you are relating the words uh, which are, you know, being output it from the with this entity matching module. So you get these objects and you get this tracking of the object throughout the video, and then you want to match those from the response you got. It's an entity matching and they go through in detail. So that's the way you are doing grounding because grounding is done like you can do the tracking. So this would be a typical output of a tracker, you know, which is a fine grain tracking you segment instead of putting bounding box. But the question is that which um, word from response correspond to which frame and which object in that. So that's the entity matching happening here. But we'll discuss more detail and when we spend a whole lecture on this. Okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, so uh, I think that the exciting part is this one. And uh, you know this guy, right? Uh, the Steve Altman. So here it shows that can you suggest a tight and this, this is a podcast, uh, very famous. This Alex, yeah, he's a very good uh, podcast interview. Lots of people. He's a, he was a MIT professor, then he actually quit and started doing these things. Um, so, so he's interviewing. And then said, can you suggest a title for this video clip based on what you see and hear? So without audio, it says, I would suggest the future of technology and communication as a title for this video. But with audio, say based on audio, the title could be the future of AI, a discussion of GPT-4 and GPT-4. GPT. Because you know, this is the audio transcript from the whisper. So that's you know, showing that audio can help you. Did you have a question? Uh, no? Okay.